Brennan, the test tour of Pakistan is a novel experience for all your players, bar the remarkable Jimmy Anderson. How much of a thrill then to be here after all this time? Yeah, great thrill actually. Athens, I think, you know, we've sort of looked at, we look at what we're able to achieve throughout the summer and we're very proud of that um, and to play in front of our fans and the goodwill which was built up from not just us to the fans but the fans for us as well was, was something we're really proud of. But to now have that, um, have that tested overseas and in extreme conditions and in a country which has been starved of test cricket for so long um, when they're so passionate about the game as well uh, is going to be one of the greatest challenges we could ever um, ask for and we're super excited about it and I'm sure it'll be incredibly well supported right throughout which again we're proud of because we want to play in front of the big crowds and and, uh, and play and, and have test cricket being such a prominent sport so again that's a great opportunity and do you feel that obligation, given the absence, I mean, 17 years since England have play, played here, so do you feel an obligation to show Pakistan supporters what this team is about? Yeah, absolutely, um, we do, and that's, we want that. You know, that's something we're, we'll take head on, we'll, we'll take on that responsibility, we'll try and play entertaining cricket, and, and we'll try and ensure that the series is, is enjoyed by not just the people of Pakistan, but all those around the world as well. You know, this country has been, has, has not had their heroes play in front of them for a long period of time, probably not since since your days of Wazim and Waka and Imran Khan and the like, you know, there, there's been a generation which has missed out on watching their heroes. So for us to be able to play a part in that and, and have Test Kruger back here is something we're really proud of. I mean, it's unusual, isn't it? Because players tend to visit the same destinations all the time now and, and this, this, will be, this will be new and, and new for you. I mean, I did look at your record. It's shocking. You had four or five ODIs here. Shopping. and you, you seem to be batting in binary, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, I was terrible keeping as well. But thanks for bringing that up, <laughs> Athens. A good thing I'm not, on, I'm not up for selection, I guess. But, yeah, no, it wasn't, wasn't a great experience from a playing point of view. But one thing we've talked about, actually, is because of there hasn't been a lot of um, cricket here recently. Let's, let's be a little fluid with our plans around conditions and that as well. We've got a bit of an idea, but let's not get too stuck in our preconceived thoughts. Let's just be present in the moment, be where our feet are and play what is given to us. And if we can do that, I'm comfortable that we'll still make some good positive decisions in the moment. England have found it a very tricky place to come and win test matches. Only two test wins in England's history. Any, any kind of um, analysis of why it might be such a, a difficult place to come and win? No, look, I haven't really screwed down on that. We've sort of just, you know, we've got a style that we want to try and exhibit and we know that it won't necessarily be as easy to do constantly here in these conditions. Um, but there'll be times where we can put pressure on the opposition. There'll be times where we'll have to absorb it a little, a little more often. That's kind of our mantra. What's been before, you have a massive amount of respect for, but you also don't want to be too... Um, bound by that. You don't want to be bound by it, yeah. You don't want to be sort of stuck in the in, in past results. You just want to live in what what our next our next challenge is, which is over the next three, four weeks. Can I talk about one specific challenge here, which is going to be the kind of slight return to the claustrophobic feeling that players had in the two-year COVID mm. period? I mean, much of your success last year was about bringing a sense of freedom and enjoyment, and you did that by making training relaxed at times, you know, encouraging players to play golf, have barbecues at each other's houses. All that is going to be very difficult to do here because the players will basically see that narrow corridor between hotel and ground. How much of a challenge will that be? Oh, it's a really good question, Athens, to be honest, because that's exactly what we kind of identified um, throughout the summer as this team, because now the split formats as well. Um, the team spends a bit of time away from each other and it just takes a couple of days just to to get that natural rhythm of the group back together again. The, the banter, the jokes, the um, you know the smiles and the laughs and, and all those relationships together and once you have that the skills allowed to come out. When guys are stuck in their own head and they're so fixated on getting a performance their skill becomes stymied so we identified that and hence why we spent a week in Abu Dhabi together where you had a very relaxed camp there. We got a, we got a lot out of it cricket wise but for me it, cricket was almost irrelevant because for me their talent is there, their skill is there, it's how do we access it, how do we bring it out on the, on the stage where the pressure is at its most and this will challenge it no doubt but that's why the week we spent together was was fabulous and, and the attitudes that the guys have turned up here with has been superb. So yeah. have you given specific thoughts, I mean there's going to be a lot of time in hotels to kill, uh, have you given specific thoughts how you're going to handle that? No, look the hotel's 
pretty amazing to be mm -hmm. honest. It's a, it's a fabulous hotel. There's lots of space, lots of opportunity in there as well. And and we just we've got a few activities which sit amongst our team room. Um, it's just, it is what it is. We can't do a lot else because of the security restrictions, but we can come here with the right sort of mentality on the back of the week that we had, and and hopefully that's able to get us into the tour, uh, into the tour. We start our game straight away, and then we sort of get consumed a bit by cricket, and then we'll try and find some ways where we can entertain one another and, and get out of that that really claustrophobic sort of COVID bubble which we all operated in for a period of time. So it is a fascinating point that you make, and, and it's something that. We'll never know if we completely get right, um, but we've certainly tried to do that by what we've done leading into it. The other challenge is obviously going to be the conditions, which will be very different uh, to English-style conditions. I know you hate the, the term basball, but I, I, I saw the headline the other day, you know, basball won't work in Pakistan. Do you buy that or not? We'll find out. <laughs> I mean, look, I think the style that we want to play is is positive. We feel it's an obligation we have is to ensure that we entertain those that turn on the TV, that pay their their pound or their rupee and, and they, they want to watch Test Cricket. They've got so much choice out there now that we need to be able to captivate them and, and hence why we tried to, why we want to play the style that the skipper has, has led this um, side with. And it doesn't change as such the conditions you go to. There might be slight tweaks, there might be times where we have to absorb it longer and then there's times where we're asked to pressure, uh, put pressure back on the opposition for longer as well. So there might be some subtleties and nuances in that, but the overall mantra can remain the same. And given the situation, when the game's on the line, when the moment's big, be positive. Take the take the option. If we get beat, we get beat. But be positive and, and be aggressive. If Pakistan's good enough to beat us in those moments, then you shake hands, you, you, you move on, you smile on your face and you say, you know what, well, we need to get a little bit better, but at least we bought the game that we we want to play and it gives us the most amount of satisfaction. We're a couple of days out, the pitch got a bit of green grass on it yet, <laughs> it might not have on, on Thursday morning, we'll wait and see. I mean, it, perhaps less so than India and Sri Lanka, spin maybe won't play quite as much of a role here in Pakistan, but it, in the subcontinent it always plays a role and you've brought a, a teenage leg spinner, <laughs> Rayan Ahmed. How much have you seen of him, first of all? I haven't seen a lot of him, to be honest. He was obviously when his name was brought up, um, a while back his name was brought up and and you know, a couple of guys mentioned that he might be someone that we need to look to get into the system earlier rather than later because he's got natural flair and talent across all three disciplines and and you're not sure sometimes if you let that sit outside the environment where that then will go. Um, I think it's a great feather in the cap of the skipper and, and, and my coaches that I've got and the senior players that we feel confident enough to bring a young 18 year old kid who is an incredibly raw and, and clearly a rough diamond and nowhere near a finished product into the environment because we think we can get the best out of him. And if we don't, that's our fault, that's not his. Um, Are you confident enough to throw him in? Uh, look, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I think we don't have to... We've got a very good squad. We've got lots of options, very good squad. We've got two white ball players. One of them is arguably the most exciting white ball player in the world, and Liam Livingston who's desperate to be a part of this side, which is another feather in the cap in a similar sort of role as what Brown is. Whatever happens, if, if given an opportunity, he won't be the, he won't put in a performance which would be his best performance of his career, but it could be a performance which certainly makes a contribution to us. But his, his best days are certainly in front of him, but it's nice to have him in the squad. But you mentioned Liam Livingston there. I mean, you look at that middle order, Brook, Duckett, um, who may open, Livingston, um, Jacks, they're all multi-format players. I mean, a lot of people are, are saying that the game is, is diverging ever more drastically between red ball and white ball. It seems to me that you're quite keen to keep your attacking players in all formats for as long as possible. It, you know, it's tough to play all three formats, but you want to kind of drag them into test cricket if you can. Yeah, ideally, yeah, definitely, because they're some of the most skilled players in the world and and they can do things which which allow us more opportunity to be able to apply pressure to, the, to oppositions and ultimately win games of Test cricket. What you might then have to do is give up a little bit of the natural preparation you anticipate. So Liam Livingston hasn't played a Red Bull game for what, over 12 months. Does that concern you or not? Not really because you won't get him if you have to, <laughs> in the end, you won't have a player like that if you put those restrictions around them, you put those demands around them. There's too many other options out there for them. So you've got to be fluid in your thought process and 
and you've got to be prepared to be malleable with some of these guys and understand what, what's going on in their careers as well. So I'm happy to have them if they're the right characters. Um, you see him walk around, he's, he's a big personality, he's a big player, he plays an aggressive style. The skipper um, has done a wonderful job to be able to coerce him into, uh, into playing and, and I'm sure given the opportunity he's going to really perform. But you know, I think those sorts of players are, are great and again they add to the entertainment package that you're trying to bring to, to the people that watch the sport. You, you've been around a, a little bit now, you had the you, summer months in and around England cricket, you've just been a camp in Dubai where you've had the best of the main team, the Lions team, so you've got a more of an overview of, of, of the state of, of the game. I mean, how would you look at the level of talent and the raw materials within the English game right now? Yeah, and this is something I've been saying to, to Rob Key actually and, and to Stokesy and our sort of brief our conversations that we bounce off each other. I knew that there was talent within England. I knew they were good players when, when you took on this job. I didn't realise how good they were. I'm not just talking about the top tier of players. And in Abu Dhabi the other day, I spoke to the Lions and I spoke to them again at Canterbury um, during the summer as well about what we want to see from, from them um, to be able to try and play the style of play that we want to. The skill set is not a problem. <laughs> it's, uh, it's unquestionable how good these players are. It's how to access that skill. It's how they are able to allow that skill to come out. It's the environment allowing that skill to come out for them to be able to perform at the highest level. So I have a huge amount of confidence in, in the players, not just at the top level, but also those who sit underneath. It's about us now and the challenge for us is trying to keep the noise away, trying to keep the task at hand and trying to bind and gel this unit to allow that talent as an entire unit to come out and, and win games of cricket. So you're saying the pipeline is good, but there's a lot of people who, some within the organisation that employ you, would like to change it fundamentally. Does that surprise you? Yeah, I haven't read too much about that stuff, to be honest. It's just other people in positions to, to do that, and, and they have their reasons for making those decisions. I just look at what my role is, what my task is, and I, I feel very lucky with the players that we have bouncing around the scene. So, I think sometimes we can get, we will or want players from everywhere else. We see a Jasper Boomer or, or an Ashwin or, or a Kane Williamson. You see these guys and you go, I wish we had one of them. Well, you know what, we've actually got them. But just let's not suppress them so much and let's not pressurise them so much and put so many distractions and noise around them that they, they're too scared to go and deliver that. Let's try and free them up. Let's protect them, bring them into an environment. And if we can get that skill to come out, then we, we've got to have our own world-class players. You, you were quite new to the job and quite new to test match coaching, or very new. Yeah, um, new. Brand new. <laughs> and you, you've had a bit of experience now. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have the image of you as a coach, as somebody who perhaps just lights a big cigar, sits back and tells them to go and play a few shots. <laughs> Is there more to it than that? I don't mind that as well. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, look, ah. Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't know what sort of coach I am. I, I don't really know what a coach is as such. All I can be is authentic and all I can be is... Oh, I love people and I love seeing talent flourish. I hate seeing talent stymied and suffocated and not realised. And, and, and it hurts me if... Like it, hurt, it hurt me with Alex Lees this year, obviously us having to make that tough conversation because you see a player and you want to give him as much as possible and you try and give him an extended run when you have to make that tough call that you feel there's someone that now deserves the opportunity, it hurts you as a coach because you've failed. Um, but I guess I just care about, I care about people and I care about the game and I understand through my time as a player and also being involved in the media and as a fan and having young kids myself who love cricket, that we've got obligations to ensure that the next generation of, of talent and, and not just cricketers, but all sports people want to play this game, they want to watch this game. Um, and hence the decisions you make are always geared around that and, and I'll always be overly loyal to my players because that's just the type of personality I am. Um, whether I can help them technically, I don't know. Um, whether I can help them tactically, I, I don't know. But I want to provide an environment along with the skipper which is authentic to us and gives us the best opportunity of being successful and putting smiles on people's faces. We've been badgered to stop, so uh, I'll <laughs> let you go. Best of luck over the next three tests. Thanks, Athos.